Admiral Rob Bonta charging eight people with orchestrating a wide-ranging retail theft crime ring targeting Apple stores across the Bay Area and other parts of the state. Boxes full of Apple products recovered during a raid by CHP officers. CHP officers. This goes far beyond petty theft or shoplifting. This is organized criminal activity, and we won't put up with it in our state. The he knows what he's saying. He said that he won't put up with organized thievery. Organized theft is not permitted. But if you do petty theft and you don't organize, if you just go in and steal a couple thousand dollars, it ain't nine hundred dollars no more. A couple thousand. But these people were going in Apple stores, stealing phones and computers, and said, we can't tolerate this. So they say in the last twelve months, two thousand stores from all different retail sectors have actually closed. 2012 months. What do you attribute that to? They say by 2027, 50,000 will close. Now, some of these so-called optimists want you to believe that they're all just going online and shopping. Well, they may have a small portion to do with it. Some are doing online shopping. But you had uh, stores like this particular store. Two women were fired because people were running in there out of the store with merchandise, and they called the popo. No, seriously, get out. Two Georgia women say they were fired from their jobs at Lululemon after calling police to report this robbery, which one of them caught on camera. No, you can't. Jennifer. They swiped until they couldn't hold any more product and ran out the door. We didn't really feel very protected or like know what else to do. The women say they were fired from their jobs after they decided to call the police about the shoplifting, something they say they were told is against company policy. So they fired the employees for calling the law on the damn thieves. And you think that these stores are going to be able to stay open when you have legalized thievery? So there's two reasons, in my humble opinion, that they're closing. It ain't no online shopping. It ain't new technology. It's all BS. Number one thing is thievery. Legalized crime. They've legalized for people to go in and steal things. Number two, Starbucks, the whole food place in San Francisco only been open for a year is because of the of the violence towards the employees. It's one of the nation's most iconic brands. And now in some of the country's biggest cities, Starbucks will close stores. Though it's only 16 locations in regions like Los Angeles, Seattle, Portland, and Washington, D.C., the closures are making headlines because the coffee giant is citing safety concerns. We have to provide a self safe environment for our people and our, and our customers. The violence, and they want to say... Uh, that it's got something to do with mental illness. It's all of the damn drugs they're on. Lock them up. Put them in a, uh, a, a sane asylum if you have to, if they can't get off drugs. But you can't allow them to keep destroying. I think this is purposely that they're doing this, if you ask me. Because you remember we've been saying this for the last four or five years. Walgreens, CVS, GameStop, Starbucks, any Walmart. Burger King, McDonald's, there's nothing. Malls are almost obsolete now. Because number one, it's hard to keep employees when you want to keep giving them welfare. You gotta they're upset about work requirements with welfare. We shouldn't require them to work. So thievery is the number one reason. And I'm saying most of it's shoplifting. It ain't shoplifting. These people are, this is Strong arm robbery, if you ask me, going in, just taking stuff, leaving out. You guys are really awesome. Thank you so much for your business. Thank you so much. So what are they supposed to do instead? You kind of clear a path for whatever they're going to do. And then after it's over, you scan a QR code. Rogers, who says she's worked at the company for five years, claims that the store has been dealing with thefts for months, recalling another incident. 
Then like you got that. some of the employees working there. They ain't nothing but thieves, too. They're stealing stuff. We did a story a while back. A woman who thinks she's working at Walmart was stealing them blind. So you got legalized thievery. You got people who don't want to come to work because they can get welfare. And then you got the people, they have to close down because it's, it's too much violence towards the workers. You're dealing with these three particular issues. Laziness, because we have raised a, a bunch of lazy people who don't value work. Thievery is the number one uh, reason. Uh, and the, the the third one is uh, it has nothing to do with online shopping. It has more to do with the violence towards the employees. And some of them have admitted this. It's too dangerous for our employees. So we got to close down. Do we have law and order in this country or not? There ain't a store you can name that's not affected by this. Technically, it's almost as if they're purposely doing this. And don't forget, they're buying up a bunch of farmland too. All of this seems like they are purposely trying to make you where we go into a famine where they have to ration our food to you. Because they've legalized stealing. They've let criminals out of jail, and you can't protect yourself if they do something. All of these stores are closing down. Everyone you can name, pharmacies, malls, fast food chains, there's nothing that's not being affected. You would think that somebody would say, you know, what we're doing is not working. And they act like this is so complicated. Like the DA from California, he gets on here saying, we will not allow or tolerate organized thievery but we will permit the other thievery eventually if you if you permit some criminals to break the law the other criminals are going to always take it to another level so all of these crime going on all of these businesses failing and nobody seems to think that it has something to do with not punishing criminals this is so simple to solve it won't even take me a second to solve this lock up the criminals we're done with the meeting don't let them out of jail. Don't care how you was raised. Don't care if your mama didn't love you. Don't care if you're on drugs. I don't really care. You're not going to be getting out of jail, closing down, because when, it, when these businesses close down, the employees lose their job, and you say you care about the poor, or you care about the working class. And then either they're going to have to get on welfare, or they're going to they gonna have to suffer, one or the two, right? I guess they can go robbing and and get free stuff now. If they get fired, they can find a store to get free stuff out of too. And, and they can't call the cops because some stores have made it illegal. The two women got fired for calling the cops on the thieves. 2,000 stores, retail, whatever, has closed in one year, the last 12 months. And this particular organization is... Uh, is um, predicting 50,000 closures by 2027. What's causing it? So you had this idiot like Mayor Adams down there talking about he's going to put some kiosks in there. He's going to put counseling in there. They're stealing. Now they're going to stop. I was about to steal some, but you like to counsel me? Oh, yes, I, I am having problems with stealing. I'm a kleptomaniac. So therefore, I need some help. How about we lock you up? That right there, I'll give you the proper help. We're going to see more of this. And you you, you got to come to the conclusion that your government is trying to do this. These George Soros lawyers, these rogue judges who's trying to prosecute innocent people are people for misdemeanors, and they're letting violent criminals out of jail. You will keep seeing these closures going on in America. Gap. Banana Republic is lagging behind in the retail world. Since there has been a decrease in foot traffic in its physical stores for seven consecutive quarters, the company has been compelled to drastically scale up its brick and mortar presence. It announced the closure of 130 locations in August and set a target to double online sales. Nevertheless, with the growth of eco-friendly small firms on online marketplaces, executives are starting to wonder if the brand is no longer necessary in this crowded garment market. Number 4. Nordstrom The upscale department store operator Nordstrom 
has stated that it plans to close all of its underperforming locations in the United States. The goal of this action is to cut the chain's operating expenses by $150 million. Comparing this time period to the same one previous year, there has been a 9% decline in foot traffic. The chain recently lowered its year-over-year -year revenue expectations from 8% to 5%, underscoring the severity of its financial problems. Number 5. Carter's Currently, there are plans to shutter 200 Carter's doors. The children's clothes store decided not to extend the leases at its less successful outlets. Carter's CEO Michael Casey told analysts that his company, like many other retail rivals, is dealing with an excess of inventory that is not moving as quickly as it could. The CEO said that the supply and demand imbalances pretend poor news for this quarter's earnings and difficulty for Carter stocks, which have already fallen by 11% in the previous month. Number 6. Michaels Arts and craft store Michaels saw its shares drop to an all-time low last year after its financial reports for six consecutive quarters fell short of investors' expectations. The business has struggled to survive ever since, even before the health issue. As a result, the company's shares fell by 65%. Since its revenues have been declining for several years, Michaels is now in danger of going out of business owing to competition from bigger companies like Amazon or discounters like Walmart and Dollar Tree. Number 7. Music Center With a debt load of $1.3 billion, Guitar Center, which was founded in 1959 and is presently the largest retailer of musical instruments in the United States, filed for Chapter 11 restructuring in 2020. Although the store and interested parties came to a restructuring plan that reduces its debt by approximately $800 million, the business is still in trouble. Since approximately 10 years ago, Guitar Center has struggled financially as a result of obstacles in creating an online presence. Number 8. Steinmart The revenues of discount retailer Steinmart fell by more than half in the first quarter of 2020, and the company has not turned a profit since 2015. The company's debt rose to nearly $200 million during this time. Affected by the recent wave of corporate bankruptcies, Steinmart is one of the retail chains. The company is presently having liquidation sales at all of its about 280 sites, which are expected to close down permanently by the middle of 2023. Number 9. Fossil Fossil Group A watch and handbag designer by the name of Fossil Fossil Group is well known for its namesake fossil and zodiac timepieces. As a result of the company's stunning $96 million sales loss, basic business operations are becoming more and more challenging for the corporation. Since then, Fossil's situation hasn't improved at all and the company recently announced plans to cut the number of its stores by 20% in 2022 and 2023. Number 10. Century 21 After its insurance company declined to pay a claim for $175 million to cover business interruption caused by the advent of the health crisis in that same year, Century 21 declared bankruptcy in September of that same year. Since that time, the company has closed all of its East Coast locations while only reopening one store in New York. Given the drastic drop in this retail footprint, Century 21 might disappear before our own eyes before anyone even notices. The demise of these once celebrated brands can be attributed to a common factor, the struggling economy that is unable to provide the necessary support for businesses to flourish. With the current state of affairs, the American consumers are grappling with soaring prices, the likes of which haven't been seen in decades, and their wages are not keeping pace with the rising costs. As a result, the average consumer is finding it increasingly difficult to meet their basic needs, leaving little room for discretionary spending. This has translated into a sharp decline in sales for these companies, ultimately leading to their downfall. As the purchasing power of the average consumer continues to erode, more and more businesses are feeling the pinch. The wave of bankruptcies and store closures that we are witnessing is just the beginning of what could be a long drawn out struggle for survival. The high cost of doing business, combined with the intense competition from e-commerce giants and discount retailers, is making it difficult for traditional brick-and-mortar stores to keep up. Thank you for watching today's video where we discuss the top 10 store chains in the United States that are in danger of disappearing from our current economic landscape. The retail sector's decline is one of the most devastating events that the American economy has encountered in the last 10 years. Every store closure implies that thousands of jobs can vanish overnight indicating that even the country's most well-established companies could cease to exist before our very eyes. Do you think the trend of online shopping is killing physical retail stores? Which of the store chains we discussed today do you think will be the first to disappear? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.
please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel for more informative videos just like this.